Ever think about how much we take for granted? Like uh, flipping a switch and the lights just turn off. Yeah, I know, right? But for a lot of folks around the world, reliable electricity, that's a luxury, not a guarantee. Absolutely. And when it comes to healthcare, that lack of reliable power can be a matter of life or death. Especially for folks with kidney failure who depend on dialysis. Couldn't agree more. That's why we're diving into this amazing student project in Ghana. Solar power dialysis. Uh, seriously, it's like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's real. It's cutting edge. Yeah. And we've got some great sources to break it all down for our listeners. So uh, maybe we should start by giving folks a quick refresher on what dialysis actually is. Right, because not everyone's a medical expert. In a nutshell, it's for like an artificial kidney. Exactly. When your kidneys can't filter your blood properly, dialysis stepped in to remove waste products and excess fluids. It's literally life-saving stuff. Uh -huh. But traditional dialysis machines, they're expensive, they need a ton of electricity. And that's a major barrier for so many people, especially in developing countries. This prototype tackles both those issues head on. Okay, so how does this thing actually work? I was looking at the diagrams and the research, and it seems surprisingly low tech. That's part of its genius. They're using basic principles like osmosis and diffusion, but in a really clever way. Osmosis. Like, uh, what happens when you soak beans overnight? Exactly. Water moving across a membrane to balance things out. Right, right. So in this solar-powered machine, you've got a semi-permeable membrane. It's kind of like a super fine sieve. Sieve. Mm -hmm. Got it. And it separates the toxins from the blood, allowing the clean blood to be returned to the body. And this whole process is powered by the sun. That's wild. Yep. No need for a constant electrical hookup, which is perfect for areas with unreliable power grids. I love how they describe it in one of the articles. Red tubing carries the contaminated blood out. Blue tubing brings the clean blood back in. Yeah, it's like a color-coded roadmap for blood purification. Pretty neat, huh? Definitely. But it's not just tubes and filters, right? There's some serious tech involved, Ooh, too. Absolutely. This machine has sensors, alarms, the whole nine yards. Safety first. You bet. It constantly monitors blood pressure, temperature, even the patient's heart rhythm with an EKG. Hold on, EKG? That's impressive. Right. And if anything goes out of whack, alarms go off, and the system can even adjust itself automatically. Wow, that's a lot of smarts packed into one machine. And remember, this is still a prototype. They're constantly refining and improving it. The team really emphasized the local sourcing of materials, too. Chips, sensors, tubing, they're getting as much as they can right there in Ghana keeps the costs down and boosts the local economy. Two birds, one stone. Exactly. And it makes the whole thing more sustainable in the long run. Speaking of sustainability, I was reading about some of the challenges they're facing, like the need for more robust pumps. Ah, yes. The pumps are crucial. They're the workhorses that circulate the blood through the dialyzer. And robust meaning. Think durability, precision. They have to maintain a continuous bubble-free flow. Air bubbles in the bloodstream. That sounds... Uh, not good. Not good at all. It could be fatal. So the pumps need to be top-notch. Right. Makes sense. And they also mention needing to refine the filtration process itself. That's another key area. They're working on optimizing the membrane material, the flow rate. All to strike that balance between removing enough waste and, well, not removing things you need. Precisely. It's all about maximizing safety and effectiveness. Sounds like they're really dotting their I's and crossing their T's. They are. They're aiming to get this machine deployed in hospitals and clinics across Ghana within the next few years. That's ambitious, but think of the lives it could change. Millions of people who currently lack access to dialysis could finally get the treatment they need. And it's all thanks to a group of students. It's inspiring. It really is proof that innovation can come from anywhere. It really makes you wonder what other healthcare problems could be solved with this kind of creative thinking. Exactly. Maybe we need more of this outside the box approach. And the focus on sustainability, on making healthcare accessible to everyone. Absolutely. Those are the values that drive real progress. So, for anyone listening, what if you were to tackle a healthcare challenge? What could you come up with? What kind of ingenious solution is out there waiting to be discovered? Think about it. The possibilities are endless. This Ghanaian project, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's get those brain juices flowing, folks. Who knows what amazing breakthroughs are just around the corner. That's what makes this field so exciting. The future of healthcare is being shaped right now. And who knows, maybe one of our listeners will be the next innovator to make a global impact. Wouldn't that be something? We'll be watching. Until next what time, keep those minds curious. Who made dialysis machine. And what is it about? I mean, how did it come about? 
So please, um, when a person's kidney gets injured or diseased from an accident or maybe from a disease like nephritis, and the kidney can no longer perform its function like it's supposed to, which is filtering of toxic substances from the body like urea, excess salt, and then dissolved minerals, and then maybe excess water, then the nephrologist will opt for a dialysis treatment to get those waste substances out of the body. And this is the dialysis treatment. So what happens is that blood is taken from the patient. Okay, first, um, an arterial, a vein, and then an artery are connected to form a fistula so that to give the patient a firm grip because a lot of pressure will be needed to take the blood from the patient and then go through the whole process. So the red tubing that you see here take the contaminated blood from the patient and then the peristaltic pump they work under the principle of peristalsis. So it, it will, we have flexible tubes it will contract and then relax to provide the right pressure for the flow to flow through and it will come to the dialyzer here can see this fiber like things here please can you move the camera to this place you can see this fiber like things here inside is a fluid called a dialysate so it has lower concentration than the contaminated blood so the contaminants will move the blood into the solution through diffusion and then it works using the principle of diffusion and osmosis so the purified blood will then run back to the patient so please i would like to hand over to Presla to help us with the whole operation of the device but, but before Presla can see what were some of the items that were, um, were used to build this dialysis machine, solar power dialysis machine? Okay. So please, this thing that you see, it's a local board. Okay. This dialyzer, we bought them the chips, we got them. And this one too, we bought them. But we looked on this one, like you see, to make this in our school. And then we have uh, blood pressure sensors, we have electrocardiogram, and we have these buttons. So most of them were locally sourced. Right. Um, okay. We have the solar panels, that once we got them. So our device operates on solar power. So in case there are power outages, the system can still run. Interesting, interesting. Um, you wanted your colleague to also come in. I don't know. Um, write your name. My name is Priscilla Sampama. Right. Priscilla, what do you have for us? Okay, so I will take you through how the whole thing works. In this. Okay, so she made mention the contaminants being um, stored in the patient. So we have two tubes, the red one and the blue one. The red one will take the contaminated blood from the patient tr um, through the peristaltic pumps to the dialyzer where the filtration will take place. So the blood is being filtered here and the contaminants will be remained in the dialyzer. And the filtered blood will pass through the blue blood tube back to the patient. So it's a cycle, it's continuous. Um, it will take about four hours for all the contaminants in the patient to be removed. Okay, so the patient's vitals will be measured. We have sensors built inside the machine and all the vitals will be displayed on this screen. So the blood pressure, the electrocardiogram, blood flow rate and temperature, all of them will be displayed here for the doctor to see. We have also programmed the machine to make automatic adjustments to any deviations. For instance, when there is a significant drop in temperature, the Machine may increase the pump speed for um, to maintain the system, system to um, circulate. All the circulation should be um, constant and no deviation. So we also have visual alarms that will alert the doctor to any deviations that I talked about, so that they can attend to the patients. Can this really work in a health facility? So please, honestly speaking, this is a prototype, so it has to undergo um, some process of refining before it can come to the market. So More scientific refinery before it can come to the market. So now what are we waiting for? We want investments because there are a lot of things that we are planning on adding. We want to add robust peristaltic pumps that will actually trap the air bubbles that we can even see because if they should go into a patient, it can end up killing the patient. So we have a lot of modifications to make. What really inspired the team to do this? Yes, thank you for the question. Please, we heard of the dialysis treatment situation in, in Kolebu Hospital. And then we got to know how dialysis treatment is very costly in our country. So we decided to create an, um, an affordable dialysis solution using locally sourced materials so that the cost of production will come down. So that in the next two to five years, we expect that this machine will be deployed to hospitals and clinics in Ghana so that the poor, those in... Um, far areas, those in the areas with unreliable power supply can get access to affordable dialysis treatment.